All right, everybody, welcome back. We're ready to jump into another deep dive. And uh, today it's all about AI. You know, specifically, we're going to be looking at a Chinese startup called DeepSeek and their model, DeepSeek R1. Now, to help us break it all down, we're going to be looking at what Andrew Nang has to say about all of this. Now, even if you're not like a total techie, this is some seriously important stuff we're talking about. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about potential changes to everything, how we work, how we learn, maybe even the global balance of power. So buckle up. Yeah, it's a big one. For sure. DeepSeek R1, it's a generative AI system. So think chat GPT, right? But what's got everyone's attention is it's performing as well as models from these giants like OpenAI. And, and get this, they did it for way less money. Yeah, I saw that. Six million dollars to train DeepSeek R1 mm. versus like hundreds of millions that the big companies are spending. That's a crazy difference. It kind of makes you wonder, like, did they cut some corners or something, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's where Andrew Neng's perspective comes in. He's, you know, he's not easily impressed. And he seems pretty excited about this. And I mean, his track record kind of speaks for itself, right? Co-founder of Google Brain, chief scientist at Baidu, Stanford professor. Oh, and he also co-founded Coursera. So this isn't just some, like, tech enthusiast with an opinion, you know? Right. So when Andrew Neng talks about AI, People listen. So what's he so excited about with DeepSeek? What's the big deal? Well, one thing that stands out is how they developed DeepSeek R1. Instead of being all secretive about their tech, like a lot of those U.S. firms, they went with what they're calling an open weight approach. Open weight. OK, I'm not familiar with that. Think of it like open source. But for AI, you know, they basically made the model's blueprint public. Anyone can just like look under the hood, see how it works, even build on it. Wow. OK, so what's the advantage of that? Mm. Does it mean like faster development or something? It does a few things, actually. First, it like totally lowers the barrier to entry for developers. You know, you don't need the resources of some giant company to experiment and innovate. This could lead to all sorts of crazy new applications and ideas that we haven't even thought of. I guess it also means less secrecy. Yeah. Right? but I guess that could be good or bad, depending on who's using it. That's a great point. And it's something that Andrew Neng brings up, too. You know, that potential for misuse is definitely a concern. But he also makes a good argument that, you know, if we restrict open source AI too much, it could actually just slow down innovation and hand an advantage to countries like China who are taking a more open approach. So there's like geopolitical considerations as well. Speaking of which, didn't the U.S. put some restrictions on exporting those top-tier AI chips to China? How did DeepSeek even manage to do this with limited hardware? Yeah, you're right. Those U.S. export controls stopped DeepSeek from getting those most powerful NVIDIA chips, mm. the H100s. So they had to make do with the less powerful H800s, which you'd think would put them at a disadvantage. But here's the thing. DeepSeek found a way around it. They developed these super efficient algorithms. So instead of just throwing a ton of computing power at it, they got more efficient with what they had. Exactly. And that's a big reason why Andrew Nang is so impressed, you know? DeepSeek is showing that you don't always need bigger and bigger models for cutting edge results. Sometimes smarter algorithms are the way to go. OK, this is starting to make sense. So DeepSeek is getting all this attention because they're basically getting the same results, but for way less money. And they're doing it with this more open approach. This sounds like way more than just another tech story. It sounds like it could be a real turning point for AI. You got it. That's exactly why Andrew Neng thinks this is so important. He sees DeepSeek as a sign that China is catching up to the U.S. in AI fast. And in some areas, maybe even pulling ahead. And this open weight model, that could really speed things up, right? It could level the playing field and more people into AI development. Yeah, absolutely. That's what Andrew Yang is highlighting. It's like a domino effect, cheaper, more accessible AI means a surge in innovation. But it also brings up a whole bunch of questions. How companies will make money, how governments will regulate it, and even what it means for national security. Wow. OK. So the implications go way beyond just some new AI model, right? That's right. We're yeah. talking about potential changes in the tech world and even beyond. Yeah, for sure. And this leads to Andrew N's next point, which is where he brings up a really interesting comparison to a historical event. He says that what DeepSeek did could be China's Sputnik moment. Wait, Sputnik, like the satellite the Soviets launched back in the 50s. Yeah. What's the connection there? Exactly. Think back to 1957 when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, the first artificial satellite to orbit Earth. It caught the U.S. totally off guard and it triggered this like wave of anxiety, you know, this feeling of falling behind in the space race. Oh, I see. I see. So you're saying Deep Seek is like China's Sputnik. They're showing they're not just catching up. They're actually challenging the U.S. in a key area of technology. Exactly. And just like Sputnik led to massive investment in U.S. science and tech. 
Dubseek's achievements are making people seriously rethink U.S. competitiveness in AI. There's the sense that the, the game has changed, you know? So it's not just about, like, bragging rights then. Yeah. It's about economics and maybe even national security. For sure. Yeah. And it also makes us rethink the whole global open source landscape. Remember we were talking about DeepSeek's open weight approach, making their models blueprint public? Yeah. Yeah. That was a pretty bold move. Well, this could be a sign of things to come. What if China becomes the champion of open source AI, yeah. you know, fostering this more collaborative, community-driven way of developing AI? That would be a huge shift. It's always been kind of a back and forth between open and proprietary models. Mm -hmm. But if China's leading the charge on open source, it could attract developers and talent from all over the world. Exactly. And that could have a huge impact on the global AI supply chain. Companies and countries might feel like they have to go with the more open approach just to stay competitive. It's crazy how these tech advancements are so tied up with geopolitics, you know? It's like some kind of high-stakes chess game. It really is. And remember, those U.S. export controls on those advanced chips, they were supposed to slow down China's AI development. But you could say that they accidentally made things even better, right? DeepSeek had to get creative with less powerful hardware, and they came up with some pretty amazing solutions. Yeah, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? Sometimes I'm... these restrictions backfire and they just make people even more determined to succeed. It shows that innovation can happen anywhere, even when things are tough. Like they say, necessity is the mother of invention. This whole situation is definitely making policymakers rethink things. Definitely. The whole debate over open versus proprietary AI models is a big deal now. Governments are trying to figure out how to balance national security concerns with encouraging innovation. It feels like we're at a crossroads. The choices we make now are going to have a huge impact on the future of AI and maybe even the balance of power in the world. Yeah. So where do we go from here? What does all this mean for people who aren't AI experts? That's the million dollar question, right? Let's try to unpack some of those potential implications for everyone. Yeah, that sounds like a good place to start. So like what does a world with cheaper and easier to get AI actually look like for us? Are we talking like robot butlers and flying cars? Yep. Or is it more, you know, under the radar changes? Hmm. Maybe not flying cars quite yet, but the changes could be huge on a practical level. We might see a ton of AI powered stuff in our everyday lives. Think about virtual assistants that actually work, you know, yeah. or educational tools that like adapt to how you learn and healthcare that can spot diseases way earlier than we can now. Okay, yeah, that sounds pretty amazing. But I gotta ask, what about all those sci-fi movies where AI takes over? Should we be worried about that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. You're right to bring that up. Like any powerful tech, AI could be misused. There are definitely valid concerns about like, Algorithmic bias jobs being lost as things get automated, mm. and even AI being used for, you know, bad stuff. So it's not all sunshine and rainbows then. It sounds like we need to be really careful about the ethical stuff as AI keeps getting better. For sure. We have to be open and honest about these issues and make sure we're developing and using AI responsibly. That means having clear rules and guidelines for how it's made and used. It's a huge responsibility. It feels yeah. like we're at a really important moment, you know? The choices we make now are going to decide how AI shapes our world in the future. Absolutely. And this is where DeepSeek and that whole open weight movement could actually be a good thing. It challenges the big tech companies, right? And opens things up to more people, which could lead to more ideas and innovation. So it's not just a competition between China and the U.S. It's about making a more open AI world that benefits everyone. Exactly. And as AI gets easier and cheaper to get, it could give individuals and smaller groups the power to use it for good. Think about using AI to fight climate change, improve education, or solve those really tough social problems. The possibilities are huge. Wow, it sounds like there's a lot to be excited about yeah. and a lot to be careful about. It's complicated, but definitely worth paying attention to. Couldn't agree more. The AI revolution is happening now, and we all have to make sure it's a revolution that helps everyone. Well said. Well, looks like we've reached the end of our deep dive for today. But before we go, I want to leave you all with something to think about. We've talked a lot about the tech stuff and the politics of deep seek success. But here's a question. Could this be the start of a new kind of global teamwork in AI? Hmm, that's a really interesting idea. Could working together on AI actually help us move past competition between countries and create a more cooperative world? It's something to consider for sure. And on that note of, well, maybe cautious optimism. We'll wrap things up. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into AI. Until next time, keep exploring and stay curious.